welcome to another painting video. In this video, I'll be painting the most exalted of all 8-bound. These models looked very silly to me, and I wasn't really sold on them at all. Also, the lore didn't help that much. But, seeing them in person, they do have that over-the-top 40k aesthetic that I love. Let's paint them up, so they can start wrecking some stuff. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? I primed the model black as I usually do. I then spray the model with sword hilt burgundy, mostly from an angle so the deepest recesses stay black. This can also be done with a brush or using a heavy dry brush technique. <coughs> with Buckman's glow I'm starting the first layer of skin. I will build up from burgundy to a pale skill tone in a couple of steps. The second layer is Cadian Flesh Tone. I make sure the previous layer is always visible, which means that following layers usually will become smaller and smaller. With Gisla Flesh you can really see the definition on the muscles we're painting. I use thin lines to give the skin the texture of sinewy muscles. With Flayed One Flesh I dot the areas that would be the lightest. Just look for the thickest muscles or parts where the light would hit. All the recesses get a shade of Berserker Bloodshade. I also shade the areas that have implementations in them so the skin looks extra irritated. Demonic appendages get a shade of Targor Rage Shade to discolor them a little bit. Because the entire model has the same base color, it's a little bit hard to see the skin. But as we're going through the model, everything will get their own look soon enough, with the burgundy as a base. Well, let's have a look at the armor next. The armor will be painted very similar to the skin. With corn red, I'm layering the raised areas of the armor, keeping the burgundy as a base. With Evil Sun Scarlet, I continue layering. The armor looks like sinew, so texture-wise, it'll look a lot like the skin of the 8-bound. I continue my sketchy layering with Wild Rider Red. The strokes get smaller and smaller, focusing on the raised areas. The final highlight is Kissel of Flesh. This will give the armor a bright and fleshy looking highlight, further emphasizing the sinewy armor. Recesses get an extra shade of Druki Violet to add a little bit more contrast to the armor. The model is starting to become a little bit more clear, right? Still a lot of burgundy, but the next step will take care of this. All metal is base coated with Iron Warriors. This model is loaded with small details, so do take your time with this. I shade all the metal with Non Oil. All brass is first base coated with Balthazar Gold. I then add Rune Lord Brass as a layer and highlight. This will bring some brightness and variation to the brass. I shade the brass with Serapim Sepia. And highlight both the metal and brass with Canoptec Alloy. All World Eater symbols I first paint metal and then cover them with Achillean Green contrast paint. Now this really adds a lot to the model. No more sea of burgundy. Now we're getting all the important details clear as day. Well, let's have a look at all these small details. The leather tabards are first base coated with dryad bark. 
then layer it with Gorthor Brown. And highlight it with Karak Stone. Weapon covers are painted with Black Templar. This runs throughout my whole army. All tubes I can find are painted with a black legion. And highlight it with Dawnstone. I paint the horns with Incubi Darkness. Just to add some variety, I'm going to paint all the big horns differently than just bone color. I layer on Thunderhawk Blue to the ends of the horns. I just feather it on. I do the same with Pharisian Grey, concentrating on the tip of the horns. Teeth, skulls and remaining stuff gets base coated with Usapti Bone. Shade it with Skeleton Horde. And highlight it with Screaming Skull. Well, this takes care of most of the details, but there is a couple of minor things we still need to do. First, I paint the eyes with white paint. Because I want them coated with striking scorpion green, which will give the eyes a cool neon bright color. The wrappings of the Eviscerator should still be burgundy. I highlight these with a mix of Sword Hilt Burgundy and Kislev Flesh. I repeat the highlight, but I add more Kislev Flesh to the mix. A World Eater's model is not complete with a liberal coat of blood for the Blood God. Add where you want. I repaint the blood with Flesh Terror Red, which will make the blood look a lot fresher. And we're done. Here we have Exalted Eight Bound ready to destroy anything in their path. They did won me over in the end and there are some very cool details on the models. They're also very busy though. I'm not sure I want to paint another three anytime soon. For my next video I'm going to paint some scenery before I start my Death Guard project, where I'll be adding new units to the army and even repaint some older ones. In the meantime, be sure to check out my Instagram, where I'll post pictures of current projects and behind the scenes stuff. But for now, thanks for watching.